Good morning, folks. Happy Saturday morning. So I wanted to talk to you um, about maps this morning. I would suggest that if you do get a map book, as you can see, I have the Ram McNally Motor Carrier Road Atlas. If you are a truck driver, I would highly recommend that you get one of these. And I would highly recommend that you get a laminated copy. And the reason you want a laminated copy is because it will last you for years. Now, if you're traveling and let's say shift happens and you are trying to figure out where to get fuel, where to get batteries, um, things of this nature, food even. <clears throat> now, one of the first things you're going to look at for food is you're going to look at refrigerated trailers. Now, refrigerated trailers normally have a gas tank somewhere on them, and they will also have an engine outside of the box and a lot of times it will be mounted on the nose of the box. And they are very loud. So refrigerator trailers a lot of times are used to move food. Um, but some of the placards that are on trailers will help you avoid a dangerous situation. Some of the placards you do not want to mess with are the radioactive placards and the explosive placards unless you are looking for items to use um, to put around like your homestead um, to make mines, etc., um, Those would be the ones you would look at. Now, I will say this. Most of the radioactive and the explosive placards trailers are going to be stored in a secure facility. And you're going to have to have... Um, there's going to be people there <clears throat> who are security. So... Even in a shift situation, I'm pretty sure that's not going to go away. But one of the things you want to look for is flammable. And the flammable placards, you will find a lot of these on tankers. So if you're looking for fuel, tankers are a good indicator that maybe that container has fuel. Um be aware that that's not a guarantee that it's going to be gasoline or diesel. It could be um, plain fuel. It could be anything whatsoever. But if you get a Ram McNally book in the front of it, it gives you the hazmat identifiers. It tells you everything, uh, classifications. It, it, it tells you everything that you're going to be uh, wanting to look at and kind of get an idea of what is in what. But another thing that is good about... <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch of information in here. Um, it gives you low clearance locations. So if you have a vehicle which is over 13.6 in height, um, this will give you... Uh, locations of where in those states and in Canada um, that <clears throat> those low clearances are. But there's no guarantee. Now, it has a United States map. And if you're going from one state to another state, all of these blue lines are the main roads. 
in a shift situation, these are what you want to avoid. And as you can tell, if you get on the, if you, there's, it, they're all over the place, right? If you get on the East Coast, they're everywhere. So let's say you're in Colorado and you're trying to get from Denver over to, I, I don't know, uh, Let's say you're going to go out west. You're heading towards California. These blue roads or the interstate, more than likely they are going to be clogged up with people. But these orange roads are U.S. highways. And in a shift situation, everybody's going to be up on the interstate. So you want to stay off of the interstates and you want to try and use the U.S. highways, and this, once you start to learn, see, once you start to learn how to look at maps and how to, how to route maps, uh, there are U.S. highways all over the place, and unless you're in a big truck, most U.S. highways you can get through with a vehicle, with just a regular car or pickup, pulling a camper. But the problem with the U.S. highways is sometimes, especially if you get up like in Connecticut or anywhere in the Northeast, they have railroad bridges that are only eight foot tall. So you have to be aware of those railroad bridges. So what you want to do is you want to map yourself from point A to point B, and you do that by simply going to the US map and if you want to get from say I don't know Florida right to somewhere let's say to uh, Mississippi so what you do is you just take your fingers and you draw a line. And what I used to do is I would just take a straight edge and I would go like this. So now I have a fairly straight way of going. Now I see water, so I know I'm going to have to go up and around, right? But this is why you have a laminated map because you can draw the line with a grease pencil and when you're done you can wipe the map off right and um you can start from scratch right but another thing you got to deal with is you especially like up here in Appalachia and especially over here like in Idaho and Washington and all the way down through the Rockies uh, you're going to have to be aware that these maps are not elevation maps. So, if you're traveling from point A to point B, you're going to be running in the mountains. Okay? Um, sometimes, I, I can say this from experience, West Virginia, you do not want to get off the main roads in West Virginia unless you've got a lot of time and the reason I say that is West Virginia roads US highways tend to go up and around mountain passes and they tend to be very windy very straight up and very straight down and this will become an issue especially in the winter time but a good map uh, will help you find point A to point B. Now, let's go to my home state, which is North Carolina, right? Here's a good example in North Carolina. In North Carolina, there's all kinds of orange roads. And if I, I live over here, in this area right here, right by the Virginia line. 
And if I want to get from here all the way to the west side of North Carolina, I'm going to look for one of the straightest U.S. highways there are, and I'm going to try and take that. Now, sometimes those orange roads, if the interstate gets clogged up, those orange roads can become clogged up too in that case you have to go to even smaller roads to try and get around it and some of this you're going to have to do on the fly so a good example would be let's say let's say i'm in greenville and i want to go all the way over to Charlotte. So, getting from point A to point B, these highways are going to go through cities. These are little towns, these are cities. Some of them are fairly big towns, but they're just shown as a little black dot. Don't let that fool you. Some of these towns have millions of people in them. And especially Charlotte. <laughs> okay. Um, and trying to avoid people in a shift situation is what you want to do. So there are roads on here that are little black roads. That is your last resort. The reason I say that is, is they are black roads because they are single lane roads and sometimes they will just end. So your last resort would be a black road. Your first resort to get from point A to point B very quickly would probably be the interstate up to a certain point until you get about 50 miles outside of a main city. Once you get about 50 miles outside of a main city, the traffic is going to be horrendous and you're not going to get anywhere. So what you need to do in a shift situation is you need to have alternative routes and you need to do that ahead of time. If you're going, if you're going to be leaving your home and going to a bug out location, you need to find multiple routes and you need to take the time to drive those routes so you can make notes. Okay, well, on this route here, I have a 10-6 bridge, but my camper is 11 foot tall. So I'm going to have to go around that bridge and this is how I go around this bridge. Um, and while you're driving that route, you want to look for other things that will clue you in or maybe this would not be a good route. Number one, the way around those bridges, is it only a one-way road to go around those bridges? Is that the only way to go around that bridge? Because if that's the only way to go around that bridge, that is a choke point. And what I mean by that is that's a kill zone. So... You you have to think like you're in Mad Max. That's the best way I can tell you. In a shift situation, if you're on the roads or you're traveling on the roads in a vehicle, <clears throat> you really have to think about Mad Max situations because there will be people out there who will set up ambush points and they will specifically look for choke points where they know people are going to have to go around something and they will set up those choke points to stop people, to take their stuff, to kill them, you know, bad situation. So even on the interstate, there are choke points.
And on the interstate, most of the choke points, if y'all drove anywhere in Hampton Roads, is all over the place. Right? There's too many people, not enough road. Um, but a good map, a good map book will, will, will save you in the end. And it will save you because when you're traveling, if you're not used to traveling, then you're used to relying on your GPS on your phone. You're used to relying on, okay, I wrote the directions down. I printed it out off the computer. This is the route that, you know, Google Maps has taken me. Um, and that's, a lot of times, that's what you're relying on. But you've got to get back to the basics because in a shift situation, more than likely, your GPS is not going to work. Especially if what some individuals online <coughs> are talking about happening, which is a pole shift. If, if the poles shift, that's going to cause problems with the magnetosphere. That's going to cause problems with all GPSs because the North Pole will no longer be at the North Pole. And so North will no longer be North. And if that happens, you're going to have to figure out how do I get from point A to point B without relying on my GPS? Also, as you're traveling, you're going to run into, even if the GPS is working, you're going to run into sections on the interstate and on the back roads where the GPS does not work. A good example of this would be in a tunnel or out in the Midwest. Um your GPS will just stop working because it has no signal. And this could be because you've dropped an elevation or it could be because something is blocking the signal in that area for whatever reason. Um, but a good map is what you need. I recommend the Ram McNally map. There are many of them out there. Um, I also recommend that if you have a specific route from point A to point B, like if you're going from your home to your bug out location, I highly recommend that you go and pick up some topographical maps that will show you the elevation just in case you have to abandon your vehicle and have to walk to your bug out location. Um, I highly recommend that you do get a topographical map from point A to point B. Now, some of the other maps that you can get are specific for cities. And those are your city maps, your street maps. Um, these will have, just for that city, it will map every street, every road in that city. And those are really good to have also. You can also look at waterway maps. Um, waterway maps, if you follow waterways, a lot of times you're going to go from city to city to city, okay? Because we, we tend to build around waterways. But if you find a good waterway map, a lot of times you can follow that and then you're close to fresh water all the way to your bug out location. But that's what I have for this morning. Um, I know that it seems like a simple thing. Um, you know, it, it just seems like a really simple thing, but people don't think about it, right? A good map, a good grease pencil um, with a cloth. You want to keep that in your vehicle, okay? At all times, you want to keep a good map in your vehicle just in case something happens and you've got to you've got to reroute around. And, and Lord only knows we're so addicted to our technology that if our technology stops working, well, now we have a situation where I don't know where I'm going. 
I, I always relied on the GPS. Now I have no idea how to get from point A to point B. So I would highly recommend if you don't know how to read a map, um, go online. There are map reading classes online. A lot of them are for free. And it will give you a lot of more information than what I can. I mean, if you were sitting here in front of me, I could probably teach you. But after years of doing this, I just know, okay, you know, I'm going to take I-64 all the way out through Richmond. And I'm going to take that as far as I can go. And then I, I'm going to jump on I-77 and go south or go north. Or let's say, okay, I got to go all the way out west. Well, knowing how traffic is, I'm going to drop down and go south on 95 and I'm going to run that to I-20. And then I'm going to run I-20 all the way out. And... uh That'll get me at least to Texas. So, some of the other things that you can find on the map is empty spaces. A lot of this you're going to find in the Midwest. So, empty spaces. See all this empty spaces. Empty spaces in, this is California, by the way. Empty spaces, a lot of times, you need to know what's there in those empty spaces. Because we are in the United States, and we do have U.S. military um, installations all over the United States. And they are not going to be on the map. Okay? Um... But you can look for National Forest. This is a good place to, you know, set up a campsite away from everybody. National Forest, uh, you know, parks, things of this nature, big empty spaces. You can look and, and, and find places where you can set up camp on, you know, if you look around some of the major cities, uh, there's a lot of homeless people that will really teach you a lot about yeah you know you can you can sleep underneath overpasses or you can go up you know and, and find uh old sheds or or old buildings and and you know just places to hide so that if the cops come or marauders come you're hidden from view so that was my thing for today. Uh, map books. Simple, easy. You can get them now. I highly recommend that you have one in your vehicle and maybe one at your house. I have both. I have one in my vehicle and I've got one here in the house just in case I have to grab it and go. <clears throat> um It, it just makes sense to have it on hand. And you're able to buy it now. And uh, that's all I've got for you today. I know, it, I know it seems like a very simple topic. But there's so much to learn uh, reading maps. And the... The, there's so much knowledge out there that we just don't think about anymore because we are attached to our phones and our tablets and our laptops and our technology with with our little GPS um, apps and everything else. Uh, you you need to think old school. So old school, you would have a compass, you, you would have a ruler, you, you would have a map. 
and you would have to go from point A to point B, and that's how you did it. <clears throat> um, I just use a map book, and I, I've been up and down the U.S. highway so many times that a lot of times I'm driving along and I'm just like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta make this exit up here two miles ahead. Let me move over because I know it's gonna be a left as exit. But if you've never been there, you don't know that. So, you know, some of satellite images, you're not gonna be able to do that. If 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 the pole shift, I can almost guarantee you that the satellites are not going to be working, okay? Because it's going to take them a while to flip over to where the new north is. And also, it, it, more than likely, there's going to be a lot of satellites coming down out of orbit. So, that's what I have for you today. Bicycle!